So, welcome to Verbal Peak Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. I'd like to welcome welcome you to the show. We got Miss Pebbles in the building. My partner Krishna, as well, man, as always, man, glad to have these two special, wonderful guests on the show this evening. Now, we're going to take you briefly through time because, as we say, that quick thinking, fast moving right down to the moderate times. But we want to touch base because I want to show how uh, just in everyday life, uh, some some aspects of the Supreme Order teachings are uh, encompassed within our everyday life. And speaking to Miss Pebbles, she was speaking on how that the way her mom talked to her, where she was stating that she see them as friends, but the way she spoke and uh, I would say portrayed knowledge is if she was talking to one of her own. You know, talking to an adult in a sense. And I said, wow, you know, that reminds me of reading in the Supreme Wisdom how uh, you wasn't supposed to use baby language when speaking to your children and how uh, not to read the, those fairy tale bedtime stories um, when, 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 when you're putting them to bed. You know, how you would use spelling, uh, mathematics, and science in a sense so we can grow uh, certain skills and and also it stretches the mindset of their capabilities or meaning that there's no level of, of things that they can't reach that they can't aspire to. So we're gonna start off with Miss Pebbles though, but 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 compared to let's say friends or other households, can you tell the difference in that style of teaching? Because that's the style of teaching because most of us coming out of not saying slavery but that mindset of. Uh, we had to read those uh, bedtime stories or Snow White or whatever to the children, how it kept our mind in a frame of a uh, fantasy world. And, and it made a lot of people hard, made it hard for them to deal with real situations or reality. You know, how would you um, really thank your mom in a sense for having that, that insight to uh, understand the, the, the benefits of talking to you in a certain way but can you share the that those benefits that uh that you experienced throughout life and how it helped you to develop into the person you are today well actually as i've always said i've gone to college but the things that i learned from home from my mother in which i i I'll perceive her as being a person a woman before her time And why I say that, because a lot of things that she taught me, I didn't need to go to school to learn it. From the things that I learned from my mother as a child, it prepared me for life. It prepared me uh, in such a way that it has allowed me to be a critical thinker. Now, if I failed in thinking, that was something on my own, okay? Not because of my mother. Right. My mother... All, have always been the kind of individual she said that by me keeping it from you it won't disallow you from being exposed to it so she said I'd rather it come from me okay yeah. than from someone on the street right right even when I was younger my siblings and I my mother introduced told us about HIV AIDS before long before it came an epidemic because she got the exposure at the hospital. And so she came home and told us about the information and I was like, wow. So once, you know, it became, it, 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 uh, as I got a little bit older and it became an epidemic, I was like, wow. I was like, okay, then I was like, she, she was, she's very knowledgeable. I even say that now. A lot of things that my mother has shared with me has came into being just to allow me to where I would, once I would see it, Initially, I didn't understand what she meant by it, but as time progressed, I understood well, and I was able to recognize that when I saw it. Those words manifest itself in real time. In real time. Even today, like, if there's a current issue going on, I will, I have my thoughts, and I keep my thoughts separate, but I will engage with her, I'll exchange dialogue to see what her thoughts are. 
And I'm like, even now with her age and her being 75, I'm like, wow, this woman is on it. She really is on it. Her her way of thinking is not it dated because she's always told me that if you have you be in this box with your thoughts, okay, mm-hmm. you will stay in cage in that stupid mm-hmm. little box and you will pass that on to generation to generation. In which I say, I tell people as an adult, it is your responsibility to evaluate, okay, all the information that you have been taught from your foreign parents. Because a lot of that information is outdated. Right. Okay. Or actually, it may not be. Right. No, yeah, right. You. you. Or, or it, might, it may not be the truth. Right. Okay. You, you. So it's your responsibility to evaluate it. And then decide, okay, is this something I can take forward and add right. to it, or I need to right. totally just let it go? Right. That, that, exactly. You, in, in other words, that you have to do your your research, and 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 see, and then apply it to your life and, and see if you get something out of it or, or you don't. You know, you you actually would have to go out there and uh, experience it in a sense. And apply it to your everyday life, whole. I mean, to your everyday life to see if this works for you or if it works against you. I see that a lot of times, man. People would get out there and they'll take things on face value, but they don't do the research. And so when they get out into life, you know, it's like they come up empty-handed because you know you didn't you didn't do your you didn't go to the drawing board and say, okay, well, I make, do your math on it. You apply this, and then you, you look at it, and you say, okay, well, what, what's the results? Did you gain an inch or did you lose an inch? You know, you have to, and that's and that's a, a very crucial part in critical thinking because we're not, we have to justify basically damn near everything you do. You can't just run out there and do something, and then someone comes and asks you, well, what made you do it this way or this way? And if you don't have an answer, then how can you pass that knowledge on? You know, you, if people would be clueless, they're in the, it will, they'll be in the dark. And that was the whole purpose of them not allowing us to read or write, you know. So we couldn't become that that, sci- that, that scientist or that mathematician or that critical thinker or, or that person who can just look at something and can break it down by elements and components and or what it is. So that definitely. Now, uh, Brother... Krishna. Oh, I already got some. What's up, God? What, go, go and drop it, brother Krishna. <laughs> All right. So, you know, y'all was speaking about the, basically the knowledge that was passed to the left brain and utilized by the left brain, the logical side. If I'm talking to my son and I'm talking to him, you know, peer to peer and, you know, I'm not, you know, using, uh, you know, language that, you know, doesn't mean anything, just making sound effects and instilling that in them. The way that my mother, she taught me, you know, Espanol when I was, you know, just a child. And I can still remember that to this day. And that's why, you know, to this day, you know, even me and Pebbles, you know, we'll speak Espanol to each other, you know, so we could work on, you know, cultivating, you know, that particular language, you know, working on being bilingual, trilingual, et cetera, et cetera. That's real. Now, as far as the right brain, is concerned when it comes to the stories and the mythologies and these particular elements that line up with the four elements air wind earth and fire you know whenever you get these stories the hey Ruth story and you get your your greek mythology roman norse mythology egyptian mythology uh sumerian babylonian etc cetera, etc cetera. these particular stories are actually talking about things going on with inside of the human body and the human experience so they're actually very advanced they're put in that particular type of story form so they can make it so simple that a child could understand it there but they're go. very it's talking about some of the most advanced science, science. is actually within these particular but- mythologies so those stories are very key now to what y'all was talking about is can be perhaps a missing element within some of the children's life where they're not getting that left brain. They're not getting they're not getting fed that particular knowledge, that left brain knowledge, you know, like law and legalities and, you know, right. numerology and mathematics yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. What's going on? Okay, allow me to say this. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the part that comes in, for instance, with myself. And I'll give you I'll we'll go back to you. It was at one point Things were, when I was a child, very concrete with me. To where my mother said, 
Well, if you don't mess up anything, then you don't have to clean up. Mm. So it was this one particular time where the iron was left on the floor. And mm. my mother told me to pick it up. I told her, no, I said, ain't. <laughs> I'm not picking it up. She said, excuse me? She said, pick it up. I said, ain't. She said, pick the iron up. I said, well, mama, you told me that if I didn't mess up, I didn't have to clean up. And she said, you know what? You sure are right. But that's when it come, come in to a point. I would say me, what I learned because of the, the intelligence I had as a child, I think it is also very important when we are providing our children with, with, these, with information, okay, and teaching them to think critically, I think it's very important to, to include a scenario because there's nothing like, okay, do what I say now as I do. Okay, what does that mean? Right. That is just so dry. Right. How about, well, if you do this, this can be a potential result that you get. I think that's very helpful in allowing a child to think to uh, think and understand what is meant and the reason as to why they should or shouldn't do something. That you know what that now that's wonderful that now see now now that's a task that's a task for us that we have to do we have to take the ancient mystery system knowledge that's been passed down all the way from 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 uh, from Babylonian for all the way from Sumerians to the Babylonians you know the Egyptians to this present time that we are in today and take and create. The new myth for the upcoming generation. You know what I mean? That way they can build off of old and understand why they're at where they're at today of what we went through in our time to maybe they can might figure it to get out of it in the future just in case. It's so crazy. You got earthquakes, hurricanes, whatever, bam, bam, bam. But I do know that uh, with these CDs and these waves and these wave files, somebody to pick it up, let's say, a uh, hundred years from now. And, and and then they can build on uh, what was created or, or, or they can look back into our time and say, okay, and, and compare that with their time so where they can pass that forward into their future. So, yeah, that would be a task, man. We need a new, in this day and time, we need a, in the, in, 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 in the wilderness of North America, uh, present time of a people who, after 450 years of slavery, came out and created because we have a new mindset now. Nobody, the first time it's ever been done. Right, right. And that, I think that's why it's important we, we, for understanding, we get visuals, we have the vocals, and have various ways for understanding. Because I could try to teach you something, and I can tell you verbally, but you may not get it. Right. But if I present you with something that you can see. You already know. It's like, okay, oh, okay, going through the steps. Right. So how would you use, no, this, this is not a topic video, we're going to do this in, in the next show. But how would you use the sun, we have to, we... The next show, we'll be talking about how we use sun, moon, star, elements of the earth, whether it's mountain and trees, to create a mythology for the future. Meaning, uh, as you see the sun shine and those sun waves as it shines in our day, to say the sun's still shining, it'll be shining in, in, in their time. And we would have to create a, a story or something that, you know, because the language might change, but the sun still will be the same. You know what I mean? Or, yes. you know, certain styles might change, but still, no matter what, the sun, moon, star, whatever, it's still going to be the same. So, to where we would reach them, just in case, so they, so our loved ones and next generation will move forward. So, look, Verbal Pick Radio, next time we do this show, we'll call this Creating the Myth. And on Creating the Myth, we're going to create the myth. Already. I ain't done deal. Right. We out. Yeah. <laughs>